The front man from Skillet, John Cooper, is my special guest today on Radio Cheddar. As they tour with Corn and Stone Sour, John took a few minutes out of his busy schedule to talk to myself. We talked about a lot of things, including a special project that he'll be working on. I wasn't sure he was prepared to talk about this, and I knew nothing about it, but he brought it up, so we talked about it. Plus, his thoughts on the death of Chester Bennington. This one hit him hard. As well as albums that shaped his love of rock and roll, and a ton more today on Radio Chatter. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff. This is Radio Chatter with WRIF's own Meltdown. Hey, thanks so much for checking out Radio Chatter. It's been a busy week, and it's only going to get busier. I've got Tommy Shaw coming up, uh, Ray and Rob from Spread Eagle, and today it's John from Skillet. This was an interview I wasn't really prepared to do. I got a call around noon at my house, and they're like, hey, do you want to talk to John from Skillet? John, I've said this before about other artists, but John is really, truly one of the nicer people in this business, as you'll hear from this interview. I mean, the guy is so happy, so full of life, just a good guy all around. They say, hey, you want to talk to him at like 12.45? I'm like, I'm still at home. I'm getting ready to leave for work right now. I don't have time. So anyhow, what happened was um, I said, how about one o'clock? They said, OK, fine. One o'clock. So I'm sitting in here waiting for John doing some you know, research to the guys from Skillet are up to, of course, uh, you know, touring with corn and stone sour and the whole thing. One o'clock rolls by 105, 110. I'm like, well, what's going on here? So made a couple emails, a couple text messages. And lo and behold, John Cooper from Skillet gave us a call today on Radio Chatter. Hey, this is John with Skillet here. Hey, John, it's Meltdown. How are you, man? Hey, I'm sorry I'm so daggum late. I don't know. That's all right. I mean, you got things to, it, you got it, things going on, too. You got a family, you got a wife, you got kids, you got rock and roll, you got everything. <laughs> well, it's it's on our end. It's my fault. I had I had an hour and a half of interviews, and I thought that I... I thought that I had done the wrong one. I must have done the wrong one, like a big dumb <laughs> moron. Maybe you, maybe you called the wrong station or just called just a wrong person. Wouldn't that be funny if you called somebody for an interview and it wasn't them? Like, you remember when uh, remember when Chevy Chase and uh, European Vacation they went to the to the person's <laughs> house and it wasn't you know they had no idea who they were. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought good movies. I thought perhaps that you were just tending to that beard of yours. I wasn't sure. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, had be, I had to do some beard play, but now I'm good. Now I'm good. All right, man. Well, we're up in a crank, and I appreciate you uh, calling in. Hey, uh, speaking of uh, of beards and stuff, uh, you know Johnny Chow is a really good friend of mine. He got engaged last night, huh? Oh wow, that's cool! Oh, you no, didn't, I didn't know that. Oh well, are you on? You're you're with the guys from Stone Sour and Corn. Maybe you didn't see the show last night. Uh, yeah, they, he he proposed to his wife on stage, I guess, in Toronto. Oh, that's wicked! No, I didn't know because uh, we had to go over the border, so we ended up leaving. It was the only show I haven't been there the whole night. We left early because we had to come back over the border and. Uh, so I missed it. I missed it. So I didn't even know about this. I got you. Well, maybe uh, maybe you'll have to give him some sort of like you know uh, beard grooming uh, gift for uh, you know his engagement or something or whatever you do. I don't yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> give him some some wax and some smell good stuff. You know. <laughs> I was I was I tweeted him out earlier today. I was going to text him uh, later on, but I tweeted him and I started tweeting like, "Hey, congratulations on your engagement." And I'm like, I don't know. Did dudes really congratulate other dudes in their engagement? I'm not even sure if that's even a thing. So I, I just said, "Hey, congrats, bro." <laughs> Hey, I think you. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I think that's a thing. I think that like throwing a shower for a dude who just got engaged is a little weird. Right. But I think probably <laughs> give him a congratulations is probably good. Yeah, you're uh, you're, you're brethren and beardum out there on the uh, tour with uh, you guys. So so how's things going out there on the on the road? Oh man, it's awesome. Yeah, I, I've got no complaints playing in front of ten thousand people every night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure you yeah, don't. <laughs> No, it's this is this is the kind of tour that that bands you know fight and stab each other or trying to get the slot, uh, you know. And I'll, I'll fight ten grown men to get on a corn tour anytime. It's going great, man. Uh, it's good to be out. I've been on tour of Stone Tower once before, and we're good. We're you know good friends, awesome band. So glad to be back out with them. Uh, I think we toured about five years ago together. So uh, it's good to be back out, but really enjoying the tour. And the fans are just like electrified. Yeah. Uh, 
I was gonna yeah. I was gonna say that it must be about five years ago because you know of course you know uh, Slipknot comes into play in the whole thing. But uh, yeah, the fans. I mean, this is the time of year, summertime. People are cooped up all winter, especially when they're touring up the, the northern parts of the United States and Canada and stuff like that. So the fans really come out. I saw you guys. I saw some video of you guys. I think from Flint a couple months ago, and you guys have like uh, had like the stages that raised and stuff like that, and the, the smoke was coming out. It was pretty cool. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we're still we're still doing some you know production gags on the tour and stuff, which I really like. Our music is kind of quite you know theatrical or whatever. And some people say some people say a little bit of theater. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I like all that crap. You know, on stage, it's kind of fun. And um, yeah, we're, we're going to do some of that. And and, and I hope you know getting some new fans because there's definitely people coming that aren't that familiar with with skillet which is good you want to you want to steal those fans or borrow you want to borrow those fans <laughs> at least for the time being right yeah you, yeah. you, you talk about you know the theatrics or your music and stuff and that's that's kind of true because it's like uh some bands you know you hear their songs and you think about them like recording them in the studio or whatever but there are some bands like you guys and like a uh, star set and like even the latest sticks album i just talked to tommy shaw where you can like you know envision the video in your head while you're listening to the music. Yeah, yeah some music is just di- yeah different like that. Um, I don't know if it's the the dynamics of it or you know the, like the ebb and flow and it, it's a little, it, it can be a little theatrical. And I think our music is definitely it's, it has its cinematic moments and uh, and that that probably comes from some of the era of music that I really love. I love seventies. It's funny that you said sticks because I love. That era of music of arena rock and and prog rock, like yes, yes is my favorite band of all time, and and Ch- Cheap Trick and Kansas and Fleetwood Mac, and there was that real kind of like very musical, you know, there were bands, bands, and and I kind of quite like that, and we I try to throw some of that into into Skillet and, and hopefully create something that people, I like to have that roller coaster feeling when you listen to a Skillet record. Yeah, you know, uh, I, you know I've heard, I've talked about this ad nauseum on my podcast, on my radio show and whatnot, but uh, Johnny Chow got me back into vinyl over the winter time, right? And so I've been interviewing guys like, you know, yourself at different things. So I'm interviewing Jeff Tate a few weeks ago and he said something about yes. I said, hey, uh, you know, if you could front like an all-star band, what would it be? And he says, well, I'd have to front yes. You know, just, just those guys, you know, nobody else, just the guys from yes. And so, <laughs> And so then, next thing you know, I'm going out and buying friggin' you know Rest Yes records. I just bought uh, I just bought let's see I bought Big Generator which I love. I never heard before, yeah. never owned it at all, and I I bought that. And then I bought the other one with the uh, what's the one with the uh, the naked guy looking up at the, uh, the the skyscrapers. God, that record's so good. I just bought that over the weekend, and uh, man, it's some really good stuff. So I I would have never guessed that you know that those would have been kind of the albums that shaped your your musical uh, you know past. No, uh, you know it's funny because uh, I wouldn't expect people to because Skillet's not a prog band. Um, but I, I when I when I first heard of those bands because I, I was a, I was kind of a metal you know metalhead like everyone in the eighties. I loved hair bands and Metallica and ACDC and Bon Jovi and, and Motley Crue and all that. Uh, but but when I really heard of like that classical era of, of progressive rock bands, I just went crazy because I, I uh, grew up playing classical piano um, and I played in the orchestra and, and all through college, I actually, I played the trombone, I had a scholarship to college and the orchestra and stuff. So I'm, my, my brain's a little classical oriented. So um, you can hear it every once in a while in a skillet song. In fact, uh, you know, our new single that just came out, I uh, heard that you guys added, which I appreciate. Mm-hmm. But, um, at the end of the resistance, there's like that, that section that comes back in in the song, and it's kind of the most prog thing we've ever done. It's like it's like complete King's X prog jam. <laughs> and that was a little bit of a, me thumbing my nose at the label because uh, – they didn't know I'd recorded that part because I, they, usually I don't get to record that kind of stuff. So I put it on there and I didn't tell my label about it. I just, <laughs> they, <laughs> they said they recorded the song and nobody heard it till it got mixed. And, uh, and I just, you know, I feel like I won one here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to win every battle you can take advantage of, you know? And it, <laughs> it, it, it's funny because, you know, you said, you know, you're really not a prog rock band, but, you know, looking at a band like Stone Sour or Corn or something, you're definitely leaning in that direction as far as you know some of those bands well yeah I think I think what a lot of people don't realize a lot of metal 
you know, has some touches of prog in it. It's just, it might not be full on math rock, but you know, you're any, any drummer that can play the stuff that, you know, Slipknot does and Korn and any drummer that does that stuff is kind of touching into progressive rock territory. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I think what's cool about Korn is, is it's just so unique. And it always feels, when I watch Korn play, it's like the sky is the limit. You know, you don't know what's going to happen and what, I mean, literally you hear things you've never heard before. Um, and that, that's how I experience corn anyway. So, uh, yeah, I think that's the excitement of music. Try something new, you know, and, and we try to do that on like on our latest single, the resistance, it's got a little bit of urban influence in the song. It's kind of got it's a little bit of hip hop on the back beats and the keyboards, but and then it's got those really heavy guitar riffs and, uh, why not try something new, man? Now speaking of uh, new, do you guys have anything new uh, in the pipe? Have you guys been working on anything, writing anything, or when you guys go out on tour and stuff, it's it's all done? Uh, you know, we've been writing. Um, we're not ready to kind of start turning songs into the label. We're still a little early for that, um, but we are writing for a new project and and already demoing. And uh, and I'm working on a couple of other secret projects as well that is kind of fun and um, getting a lot of writing so I, we're always recording in our bus always writing wherever I am and uh, you know I get inspired because I get inspired by the fans you know when I'm on stage and I see what the fans are singing back to me and or they give me notes you know they, they write notes to you about what they're going through and how a song helps you that stuff really fuels me to want to write more music so I usually end up writing most of my songs while I'm on the road now you said a few things right there. I don't want to let pass. First of all, your fans hand you notes, and they or are you just talking about like like on Twitter or Facebook or something like that, or physically hand you notes? Well, both. Yeah. Well, I met physically, but yeah, sometimes it'll just be on Twitter um, or, or Facebook message or something. But a lot of the time, even while we're playing a show, I'll see people in the front row like holding up paper, and I grab it and I see it's a note on there for 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 the band, and I put it in my pocket, and we read it, you know, in the bus at the, at the end of the night. And they're always incredible stories. It's an it's amazing. I'm like, man, I had no idea that my song would ever help. I met a guy recently. He checked himself into rehab. One of our songs helped. He said, that song t made me realize I needed to check into rehab. I got off of drug addiction. I've been clean for four years. I got my kids back from social services. I got a job, and my family's here, and it's because of your song. You know, dude, that's intense, man. You know, that that's just something you never imagined your song would do. So I love that stuff fuels me, and then it makes me want to write more, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm lucky. Yeah, that's pretty intense. You're right about that. You said something about a secret project. Now, I don't want to you know, pry too much, but uh, give us a hint. Give us anything. You know, I have been wanting to for about four four years. I have played with the idea of, of starting something on on the side that's that's its own project. It's nothing to do with skillet. There's a different sound. You know, maybe something heavier and, and meaner, and something that I could do. I could legitimately go out and, and do a Slipknot, you know, run or a Metallica run. Well, everybody wants to do a Metallica run, but you know, you get my point. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, something that's uh, something that lives in the metal world because that's a side to me that I really love that we don't get to touch on very much and um, and it looks like I'm going to be able to do that now so I've not been talking about it yet uh, because it's still in the works but you know why not it's not like it's government information or anything yeah that gets leaked out everywhere anyway so what's the difference <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I said it that's exactly what I thought <laughs> Hey, uh, not to uh, not to bring the room down too much, but you talked about how you know music inspires you and helps people, and, and you're helping people as well. And I, I just I saw your post uh, the other day with uh, about Chester Bennington, of course, after his passing. And I talked to you right after mm -hmm. Chris Cornell died, you know. And I, I guess uh, one thing is that I find it hard to believe that you never had a chance to meet uh, Chester Bennington in all these years. And secondly, uh, have you had a chance to help any musicians in the past that may have you know been going down this road, or have you had a chance to talk to anybody? Sure, sure. Yeah, what a uh, what a hard couple of years it's been, right? For for all of this, just so many of our heroes. Uh, and uh, you know, yeah, I never got to meet Jester, um, and and I was and I was a huge fan. I never met Chris Cornell either. Um, but but Lincoln Park's on on my favorites of all time, and and it was just something I never expected. Because funny enough. 
I think that Chester's music has uh, helped a lot of people that felt that way. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think I think you're talking about hundreds of thousands of people that would say, I, I had hard, dark, dark times in my life, and Linkin Park's lyrics made me feel not alone. So um, that's probably why those lyrics were so powerful. Um, so uh, and to answer your, your other question, I mean, I wouldn't say anything specific like, uh, you know, and, and nobody's called me as they, you know, uh, you know, as they've been like holding the gun kind of a thing. Right. But, you know, I, I do have relationships with people on the road and we do talk about real stuff. The thing that I could probably relate to more friends of mine on the road that have talked to me about their um, maybe abuse of drugs, abuse of alcohol and things that they, they really need to change and they feel like they're going they're going to die if they don't change their lifestyle. So not really a suicide. It's a bit more of a, I need to change my life because I feel out of control and I know that I'm going to die living, you know, waking up in a, in a hotel room. I have no idea what city I'm in, things like that. And I have talked to friends about that tried to be there for them, you know, come hang out in our bus at night. It was, it was hard for bands that said, you, you play these shows and you're so energized after the show, you're so pumped up that you can't possibly go to sleep for a few hours, you know? Mm-hmm. The adrenaline that you feel, it's almost like having a, like a really hard, you just ran a marathon and right after the marathon, you don't want to go and go to sleep, you know? And it's a little bit like that, that adrenaline. And a lot of times people are like, what do you do in your bus from 12 to 4 a.m.? You know, all the bands are partying. So I say, come hang out in our bus. We'll watch movies. We'll talk. We'll, we'll hang out and have some fun. And you can kind of try to stay away from those things that you feel are kind of a, uh, your demons, if you will. So, yes, we've had those kinds of talks. I do think it's important that, that bands get out here and, and talk to each other because it can be it can just be a very strangely like isolating lifestyle. You're you're kind of on stage and it. But that, the stage stuff isn't really real. You know what I mean? It's a little bit it's it's kind of fake and and because no one out there no one in the audience really knows who you are it's kind of surreal it is surreal right you're putting on a show and you're showing them who you want to show them and then a lot of the bands they get backstage they don't talk they don't some of the bands we tour with don't talk to each other at all their own bandmates they never hang out don't have any idea what's going on in their lives at all and uh I think that's not really very healthy. So uh, I try to help create an atmosphere with the bands I tour with, you know, open door policy. Anytime you want to hang out, you know, and I go, I knock on other bands, dressing rooms. Hey, and how's it going? I come in and talk and, and sometimes it's welcome. And sometimes it's not, frankly, <laughs> but you know, Hey, we're all in this together, you know? So it's, an, it's important stuff. Yeah. You seem to be like uh, one of the guys in this business that really has your head screwed on. Right. And I, I, and I mean, not, I mean, there's a lot of them out there like that, but there are bands that have gone, I've seen it cause I've been in this business a really long time. And uh, I've seen bands that have gone down to the doldrums, alcohol, drugs, whole thing. And then they get out of it and they're hooked on, you know, um, uh, exercise and different things. And they, they come, back out and then you know it, it's funny because you're talking about how you never got to meet Chris Cornell and never got to meet Chester Bennington and yet you look at a person like you that's playing in front of 10,000 people you think man this guy's got it all and I've had a chance to meet both those guys and when Chester Bennington died I'm like he's one of the nicest guys I ever met in this business you know I, I couldn't even believe it when, when my boss came in and told me I was like that's like mind blowing you know it's like the, the guy's so nice you think everything's good but then again you know you don't know what's going through somebody's head yeah absolutely I, I think that's I think that's true for, you know, a lot of people, unfortunately. And, and so that's why when you know, I wrote that post, I don't usually do that stuff, but it just kind of hit me and I had so many fans, you know, Skill and Lincoln Park have a, have a similar fan base. I right. think it can be, you know, c- kind of quite young and, and, uh, so many fans going, you know, why did this happen? And I just thought maybe it's good to encourage people that are feeling lonely that are feeling dark. Um, they are nice people and, and, and have friends, but maybe don't always fully open up, you know, find someone to open up to, whether it's a, you know, whether it's a best friend, your wife or a girlfriend or whatever it is, find somebody that you can open up to, you know, or the lead singer, a skillet <laughs> or, or me. I'm here, man. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny. You mentioned, you know, like uh, back in the day when we were growing up and stuff, it's like if something like this were to happen, you know, there, you, you wouldn't hear from the rock stars for like, you know, if, uh, like a month and it'd be later on in hit Prater magazine or something like that. Nowadays, you have that luxury where instantaneously you can go out there and maybe even, um, I don't know, soothe the fears of your fans and, and maybe comfort them a little bit uh, via the internet right away. 
it is uh, it's it's unbelievable and and to tell you the truth i'm still so many fans were were so thankful that i wrote something and and i almost did it because i it's probably because i'm at an i'm of an age that i i'm i didn't grow up with the internet and so i still kind of think Nobody cares what I have to say on this thing. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody cares, you know, what I'm having for lunch, uh, you know. And but I guess people do. And and it, the uh, the the like you're saying, the immediacy of I'm sending a thought out and maybe it can help somebody. It, it's very important, and it's it's important for me to even remember that people want me to see to see what I have to say about this stuff. And and if you can help a little bit, help one person, then it's worth it. Yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. Well, listen, what do you guys got going on in the future? Sure, you're going to be here in the Motor City, of course, in a few days. And you got this uh, tour with Corn and Stone Sour and whatnot. Uh, uh, what do you guys plan for the fall and the winter time? Anything? Yeah, we're um, we're doing a headline run out to the West Coast on a tour called Positive Hits, and uh, that's going to be pretty fun. And um, that's going to go all the way to Thanksgiving, and then we have December off, which is going to be beautiful. Yeah. So uh, we're yeah writing, doing some demos, and uh, you know. Start, probably start working on a record uh, sometime early next year is my guess. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. After I get on the phone with you, I'm going to call James Hetfield and see if you can get another tour with them. And, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. That, <laughs> and you have to promise me to go uh, you know, and give Johnny Chow a big hug for me and uh, congratulate him on the uh, engagement. I will, I'll say I'll, I'll say congratulations. We're not going to hold a shower for you, but congratulations. Yeah, tell him tell him meltdown from Detroit wanted to hold a shower, and I talked him out of it. <laughs> <laughs> he, I give him a tiny beard comb. There you go. Uh, there you go. He yeah. uh, I, I I got the new record, you know, a month ago or whatever on vinyl, and I was listening to it, and I'm just looking through it, and Johnny thanked me on the album cover, and that was like one of the coolest moments, you know. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it's like pretty cool. It's like you know, you you you, you like to hang out with people, and you like to think they're really. Nice nice and stuff and then when they do something like that it's above and beyond it's like it's kind of a little mind-blowing sometimes you know but he's such a great guy that's awesome and, and it's even awesome for people uh people of you and my generation because we grew up actually reading the liner notes you know and an album wasn't an album without reading the liner notes right right exactly you gotta you gotta take in the whole experience and i guess that's why i'm back to vinyl i suppose so yeah, probably so. It just sounds awesome. It's got that natural distortion that's really cool. And you know what? There's something magical, and I didn't even realize this until someone pointed it out to me. There is something magical about putting the needle down on it and just having the grooves send music through your speakers. I mean, it's just kind of amazing. Oh, yeah, it is. I, I totally agree. I grew up that way, too, man. I remember when I, whenever I think of vinyl, I mean, I had, you know, I've got hundreds of, hundreds of records, but when I think of vinyl, I think of Boston. Because yeah. that Boston record, when more than a feeling came on, I, I don't know, man. I, I, that's just what I think of when I think of vinyl. It wasn't even my first, but man, that record sounded good. And I would put it on, and oh, yeah, it's a great time, my, man. My first record I bought, I listened to my dad's Beatle records and whatnot, but the first record I ever bought was Ride the Lightning. What was your first? <laughs> Ride the Lightning has become uh, this funny because uh, the Black Album, you know, as we call it, the Black Album, right. of course, um, is is one of my favorite records of all time, hands down, my favorite Metallica record. And um, and in December of last year, I, something happened, and I always I called my 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 best mate growing up. I said, "Man, you're not going to believe this, but Ride the Lightning has just overtaken the Black Album for me." That record is <laughs> sick. I don't know what it, I don't know why I don't know why it took this long for me to decide that I. It's just so heavy and so fast, and uh, man, I love that record. Uh, my first album I ever bought with my own money was uh, Def Leppard Hysteria. Hysteria. Okay, there you go. Yeah, which is is still one of the great, one of the greatest of that kind of era. I mean, where they have six six radio hits on that record or something crazy. And I think it sold um, millions and millions of copies. That might have oh, that wow. by far the, the the benchmark for Def Leppard, right? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I think over 15 million, if I remember reading it correctly. That was a great album. And do you remember you, you remember growing up, those guys used to play in the round, and apparently there was all these stories about, you know, under the stage, the girls would be naked and stuff, you know, hearing all this stuff, yeah. you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently that's true. Right. I know someone that, that, that knows the band, and like all that stuff you heard was all true. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, there you go. Yeah. Well, John, really uh, great to uh, touch base with you. We'll see you this coming uh, Sunday. Hope to. I'm going to give your beard a tug, and I see you. And uh, you know, no, I, I won't do that. I'm just teasing you. But uh, <laughs> but thanks so much for the time and uh, good luck. We'll see you here in the Motor City. Have a great one, brother. John Cooper from Skillet on Radio Chatter today. Couldn't be a nicer guy. I mean, it's so much fun to hang out with those guys. And, uh, I mean, just super nice people. He loves the fans. I mean, I've seen him do more for the fans than a lot of bands. So, full props to uh, John and his uh, wife, uh, Corey, and, of course, the entire band of Skillet. Great people right there. Hey, Tommy Shaw from uh, Sticks is coming up on Radio Chatter. I think I'm going to post that tomorrow. They've got a new record out. It's called The Mission. And I got to tell you, man, it is 42 minutes minutes of kick assery if that's even a word anyways rate this star this uh give me a review if you could uh, share it with your friends as always and uh, as always punch me up on social media too meltdown wrif i do appreciate uh, when you guys uh, reach out and connect with me that way okay a lot of uh, radio chatter interviews yet to come so please subscribe as well and once again thank you so much for checking out radio chatter